Hey there. Oh, hey, I'm not one to self-title any grandiose labels, self-proclaim much. I mean, I do have the most moisturized thighs in the West, and I do possess the most spankable feet born and bred in the region of Eastern Pennsylvania. And yes, I am the most sought after sexual victim for female Korean bodybuilders. These are kind of just unanimously known and agreed upon. And one further thing I will say is, I am a true YouTube OG. I, 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 please don't vomit upon hearing that. Um, many of you know this. Now, I've heard people say like, Oh, I'm a, an OG YouTuber. I started posting in 2013. And have some respect for yourself and other people. You know? I get it, some people did, that, that does, that is back in the day at this point, by many standards, and I think 2012, 2013, that's kind of maybe the era of people who are still around and relevant, but when I began posting in 07, as a 15-year-old kid who looked about 12, there were not a great deal of people on the platform. It was a bizarre small community of eccentrics who probably didn't get a great deal of understanding or acceptance in their real lives. Speaking from experience here. And you know, many of those figures from that day are long gone. They've grown up, moved on to other things, they've overdosed, they've gained so much weight they have to be airlifted out of their homes. I don't know people's stories, I of course know mine, it'd be concerning if I did not, but a little brief history and I thought it would be kind of fun to take a look back upon some of these old videos and um, it's also a bit of a riveting tale as to why there isn't more 07, 08 videos of mine still out there. But when I was a kid, I only ever wanted to create comedy, make sketches, write things, act and stuff. No one told me what to do. When I was maybe 13, 14, with my dad's old video camera, I started roping guys into my neighborhood into filming sketches with me. And when YouTube was kind of becoming somewhat relevant in 07, that's when I began posting things. Oh, I got lemon seed in my mouth. Either that or a pube. Hopefully a pube. And, you know, I was a real young lad. There were not a great deal of people to give you an idea of how small that community was in 2008 when I had a little over 3,000 subscribers you used to have to be categorized as a channel you could be comedian you could be editor you could be dancer you could be singer songwriter and I like that atmosphere that was created where one kind of had to consider themselves something in the facet of entertainment. It wasn't just everyone doing anything, trying to make some money, get some views. There was no money-making opportunity until, oh, going back to my point, with 3,000 subscribers in 08, that was enough to put me on the top 100 most subscribed comedians list, which, hey, felt pretty cool for a young kid who hadn't yet sprouted a nipple hair. And it wasn't until 08 that they instated the partner program where people could monetize. It was a select group. You had to apply and be selected. I was among that first crop. Don't want to toot my own taint here, but hey, that was neat to me at that age. I had a little cult fan base. And hey, I'm not going to defend much of anything I did. A lot of it was probably horrible, embarrassing. Trust me, I heard about it in school. Some kids got it. Some uh, parents' friends were like, we enjoy Mike's videos. They're vulgar though. But you, cut a, you got a lot of flack. People are like, 
What's with the videos? This guy's a weirdo. What's with Gursky's videos? Couldn't deter me. No. In 2008, I was 16, I believe a sophomore in high school. And people knew of the videos. My family was aware of it. I think they were quite embarrassed, to be honest with you. Understandably so, because yeah, a great deal of it was probably super crude. It was a young kid doing what his conception of comedy was, but at least I wasn't really mimicking anything. You take some ideas from older sketch shows I had seen, or even Family Guy, but for the most part I was uh, trying to kind of craft my own thing. I'm sipping that freaking reishi chaga mushroom elixir. Don't tell anyone, but get on it. It's time to heal holistically and raise your vibration. Enough with this throwing your genitals around town, filling your body with garbage. Had it. So, oh wait, one day randomly, my dad gets called in to the office at school. My parents made a very strange decision to try me in two years of Catholic school in high school. I spent my whole life going to public school. Freshman and sophomore year, they tried me at a Catholic school. It ultimately did not work out. The, and I was a fantastic student, a very bright kid, a participant. Never struggled with grades by any means. I don't want to be braggadocious here, but yeah, effortlessly 4.0 every year, tug me off. That's just how it happened. But a Catholic school at that time was not open to a critical thinking, marches to the beat of his own drum kind of kid. So they didn't like when I'd ask genuinely good questions in theology class or when I'd throw a chicken patty at the ceiling fan during lunch. But one day my dad gets called into the office. There is the vice principal there, another person, and as my dad described it to me, the vice principal sits him down and she's like, do you know your son Mike does videos? And he's like, yeah, we're, we're aware he does that. And without a blink, she goes, they're disturbing. They're vulgar. And she proceeds to show him one of my early videos. I don't remember what the bit was, but I was sitting on the toilet reading the Bible laughing. And my dad had a good sense of humor about it. He tried not to laugh. And he was just like, okay, so what do you want Mike to do? And they're like, he has to delete this shit if he wants to keep attending school here. The videos had nothing to do with school. That was highly inappropriate of them. But at the time, I felt pressured. Also at the time, one of my greater regrets, or perhaps one of my greatest saving graces, I was not aware of the private option on YouTube. Sorry, I vomited in my mouth a little bit. I wasn't aware you could private videos. I was young. It was 08. I had nothing to hide. But I made the mistake when my dad got home and told me, you gotta get rid of the more inappropriate videos, the crude things. I went through and I deleted 30 of my original 32 videos. I was cooking. I was chefing up gold content in my own shtick, but I had to weed through and pick out like, okay, this one, I said a vulgar word. This one, I bent over and showed whole. And I wish I had just privated. So to this day, I can't individually recollect many of those videos. There's a few that stand out in my mind. One was called the Nickelodeon Rap. Made it in 07, 15 years old, childhood bedroom. Cooked up a beat on a Casio keyboard, let it play aloud, and I freestyled about old school Nickelodeon shows. You know, talked about trying to clap Patty Mayonnaise cheeks, stuff of that nature. And at the point of deleting that video in 08, that had 60,000 views. Sounds so insignificant now, but you could not understand. 
how small this community was. User base was growing, obviously. People were, on very rare occasion, the biggest people hitting a mill. But 60K was crazy at that time and viral. So I had stuff that was going up. And I do, I find solace in the fact these days that there probably were a number of those videos that would have come back to bite me in the ass and ruin my life, you know? There would be vulture articles written like, look at this racist. So maybe it saved me deleting a lot of those OG videos, but fortunately, a lot of them are still up. And we're gonna take a gander and I'm gonna wince and I'm gonna urinate on myself and Maybe I'll provide a little idea as to what was going on through my head. One last point I wanted to make at this time. Maybe a whole other subject for a whole other video. You couldn't begin to understand how much of a community the user base of creators was at this time. We were oddballs. We were outcasts. We were lepers. We had webbed toes. There were not a lot of people doing this, putting themselves out there. But we all connected, many of us. People in my age group, people like 15, 16, 17, 18, from all over the country, we took to these blog and chat sites to communicate with one another, and it was really a beautiful thing. And I imagine for some of us, um, one of our only means of social connection. At the time, too, I would get very nice comments at a young age, yes, Many of them were the most hateful things you could ever imagine that were far worse than anyone's even allowed to post online these days. People threatening my life every day. I'm a child. They didn't care. But there was also a handful of these older dudes who I wrote off as comedy fans. And they would, whenever I would post a sketch, I'd get some comments from these older fellas and they would very astutely break down my comedy as if to be comedy critics. It was, it was eloquent. It was uh, just very well broken down. You know, somebody would say like, you have, like this is a real like John Candy thing going here. And I love the juxtaposition of the dry with the absurd and I thought to myself at the time, like, oh, these older guys are just comedy fans. I didn't put together until my adulthood, looking back, oh, those guys were pedophiles. They were watching a cute young 15-year-old kid. And in my defense, some of it was weirdly good comedy for a, a kid of that age but I think for the most part these guys wanted me duct taped chained to a radiator somewhere there was a point when at my lowest when maybe I would have welcomed that but thank goodness we pushed through anyhow let's take a look at some of the OG vids okay this was the very first video in which I did actually post to YouTube after a brief stint on Google videos, which some may remember. So August 21st, 2007. Disturbing how long ago this was. I am wearing my father's glasses here, which very much resemble the glasses I wear currently. Oh, look at the, the that Ferris Bueller's Day Off poster in the background was an original poster, which my mom bought for me at Quaker Town Farmer's Market. My mom was not one to spend more than $2 on anybody for anything. She was a cheap Slovak woman, but it meant a lot that she bought me that poster for like $35. All right, let's take a look at me in this nerd character. I'm disgusted but delighted. I am so disgusted with a lot of issues in today's too. society, such as these skateboarder rebellious hooligans. Yes, these children, they use this foul language of these indescribable slang terms. Plus, they roll up fatties and smoke them. 
and they they huff cocaine and they get dope on crack and they it's it's I've indescribable. It disgusts me. Plus, they wear these skin tight knickers that squeeze their testicles. They can't just wear your average daily clothes. They have to stand out and be unique. Oh, it disgusts me. Ugh. Plus another group, these ghetto people, yo, 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 raise the roof. I don't know <laughs> what they're trying to prove. They wear their pants below their bottoms. They can't just wear a belt like I always do. Typically, I wear a belt. And I usually wear my pants up to around the nipple area. They have them not even on anymore. Wear your pants correctly! And then they have these slang terms that are like, Yo, what up, dog? What's going down in the his house? Could you not speak like a normal human being? And then they have these rap music. It's like, I shot some suckers and I, I, I beat my hoe with a bell and I had sex. <laughs> well, don't okay. Subscribe. All right. Well, that was delightful. Um, it was horrible. Thank goodness I evolved comedically and kept working at it. But some glimpses of something. Well, no, this was the second video available, September two thousand seven. But there definitely had been ones deleted between this time. There was me, I believe that was like an old school Celtics fitted, just barely sitting atop my head, T.I. slash Hasidic Jewish style. You gotta excuse me, it was the time. You know what I love? Yard sales. I did love yard sales. That's you can get so much good did. stuff at yard sales. And yard sales. Check out what they I got at a yard sale today. I got this sweet inflatable unicorn. It has so many good usages. But you can get lots of other cool stuff too, like these sweet glasses. Mm hmm. An Allen Iverson bobblehead. Those were from Sixers game. The New American Bible. An old ass R and B CD. A soccer trophy of somebody else's kid. See, a statue of the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. This hilarious Yo Mama joke pen. Yo Mama's so ugly that Yo Daddy rather kiss her ass than her face. <laughs> a wooden duck. A vintage Game Boy backpack. Oh, that thing was sick. That was like a early 90s Game Boy backpack. Brief story about that. I would use that from time to time to like go over to my neighbor's house with props and things to film with. And the one time, I don't know what I thought we were going to film this day, but in, in the interest of filming a video and f filming a sketch with my friends a couple houses up the street, I filled this backpack with um, a pair of uh, gardening gloves, a gorilla mask, and a saw. And I would walk up my backyard, which was a giant hill, a couple acres, and once you got atop the hill, you could see the backyard of the fishers where I was headed. And I saw, when I arrived at the top of the hill in the fishers' yard, they had people over and were playing lacrosse. So I'm like, Oh, no one's gonna want to film with me and, and if I ask they're gonna make fun of me or think I'm weird so I put the bag of props under a bush in my neighbor's yard and just walked over to the Fishers the next day I'm up in my room there's a ring on the doorbell which never happened we lived in the woods on a mountain in rural Pennsylvania no one came to the door but uh, I hear my mom call down and she goes Mike, someone's here to see you. And then she looks disgusted and goes, it's the cops. So I go down and the officer's like, is this your bag? And he reveals the Game Boy backpack that has in it gloves, a hacksaw, and a gorilla mask. And I'm like, oh yeah, those are mine. I was going to use them for props for a video. 
and I abandoned them in a bush. And he's like, okay, well, you, you can understand why someone finding a, a bag in their yard with a, a gorilla mask and a saw might frighten them. I'm like, no, I completely understand, but cleared that one up. Anyhow, oh boy, I sure loved yard sales. Minor hit, minor hit at the time. There was little bits of a young guy who had a firm understanding of his own comedic brand. Gotta give it to me. It is uncanny here looking at me now and me then, 17 years apart. I hope it doesn't depress you as much as it depresses me. This is one of the earliest sketches I remember that I, where I, I actually kind of find, finally started finding my groove comedically. And I look back at this and I think it's kind of funny. This was with my friend Roddy in my neighborhood. Roddy... I, I miss Rod. He's he's doing all right. But at the time of us getting into making videos, I felt Rod was so funny, so well comedically inclined, so dry like I was. And he was my favorite person ever to film videos with. So this is Rod littering. Somebody littered! Tyler Horvath's backyard, rest in peace, Colin Horvath. I'm wearing a pair of Air Max 95s, these like green and gold, they were hard, before anyone was wearing those as retros. Excuse me, sir. That trash you just threw there? You know what you're doing? You're destroying the environment, and I must say, the environment is a beautiful thing. So I suggest you please pick that up. Alright, who gives a the environment, all right? I'll take a dump in the environment if I want it. See, Roddy's fantastic. Pick it up! You still don't care about the environment? Pick it up! Yeah, yeah, put that bottle in the recycling bin where it belongs. <laughs> Hello there. I'm Roddy. Misspelled I've environmentalist. My because but that's funny. The environment, to, he's suddenly an environmentalist. Hey! Forever. Hey you! You see that rapper? Go, you see that? Go, yeah? Did, did you put that there? No, it was there! Did I you swear! Put that there? I swear! Pick it up! Pick it! You know where that goes? You know where that goes? Yeah. Put it there! <laughs> you see the acting chops. Jeremy! Jeremy, what's wrong? Oh, yeah, we found a dead bird on the road, and we felt... What are you doing? ...the need to incorporate it. Jeremy! I miss the neighborhood. See, ladies and gentlemen, if you let your environment go to hell, that's what will happen. Your pets, your animals, and your families will die. See ya. The environment's a wonderful place! <laughs> See, what a comedic delight Rod was. You can understand why I love making vids with him, man. Not to get too nostalgic or sad. But I... You could see, at that time, I don't know what it was, 15 or 16 years old, had a pretty solid understanding of filmmaking with no one telling me what to do or telling us what to do. Again, my mother, horrifically cheap woman, would not spend much on us. Um, at the Salvation Army in Quaker Town, where we'd go quite a bit, I must have been 13, 14. In the case in the front of the Salvation, they had Mortimer, this dummy, and they were charging 40 bucks. And my mom was like, I'm not spending $40 on something. And I really expressed interest in wanting him. And my mom said, okay, if we come back in a few days or next week and more, and he's still here, I'll get you him. Sure enough, he was. And Mortimer was a huge part of my uh, early comedic craft, form of myself. He would talk ish to me all the time. Uh, but this was a video where Mortimer wasn't Mortimer so much. He was playing a villain in a sketch. So let's take a look at Dummy Haunting. Dirty man. It's a 
pretty ill intro tune. I love horror, obviously. Well. You're right here. Get over here right now. There's this weird dummy in my room. No, dude, I'm not even kidding. Who's your cat Get over here. Poster. Colin All right, hurry. got me that from the rave movie theater as uh, as a joke. I don't think anyone enjoyed that film. But you're getting the gist already. Mortimer just keeps popping. Up. <laughs> the trophies. An accomplished song. Oh, oh, oh shit. Dude, there's this dummy in here, just come in. Dude, yeah, whatever, dude. Just come in. Dude, it's right in here. Roddy and I looked quite a bit alike. He was uh, more got? naturally oh jacked. What's he looking at? Oh, oh god, ew! Oh, that, that's disgusting. What the heck? You pervert! The joke being that's porn for Mike, more this than this is stupid. You think I'm gonna fall for this? It's obviously a fake dummy. I mean, come on. That was the this thumbnail so we fake. had to put in. Put me down, fag! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was 2008. <laughs> We didn't coordinate shirts. Go back, go back. It just so happened we both wore Abercrombie all the time because we were young tools. Oh my god, what the f are you guys staring at? We're staring at you. Why do you keep haunting us? Haunting you? Are you kidding? I was just grounded by my parents and I was bored as hell. So I came over here to chill with you guys. Alright, let's chill. How's the weather up there, little bud? It's A-okay. <laughs> Can't argue with that one. Last one we're gonna dive into. And here, pardon the arrogance, I'm going to give myself credit. At the time, infomercials were still big. Billy Mays, Vince with Slap Chop. And I did a dub of Vince with Slap Chop. And to my credit, improved. I improvised this whole thing. I did not pre-write lines. I just went through this, spoke as Vince, and again to my credit, there was a huge dub channel at the time called Djibouti Dubs. They would dub over a bunch of infomercials, and it's not the most original joke, but at one point in the video, Vince tosses the slap chop behind him, and in my video, I go, get that shit out of here, Kobe, and Djibouti Dubs released a slap chop dub days after mine or a week after mine and use the kobe joke so i'm not saying that was a like any groundbreaking originality saying kobe it wasn't that big at the time doing that but people were like did you did 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 your booty dub steal from your dub i was a kid in my bedroom no lines improvise this shit one run through and um uh, 
Also, to my credit, I have some line about him slapping a sex worker, and I think about four or five months down the line, the actor Vince got arrested for uh, battery against a sex worker. So when that happened, people commented, they were like, did you predict Vince would commit battery against a sex worker? I don't know. Borderline clairvoyant. Let's take a look at Slapchop. Oh, shit. It's... One take. Seacrest, oops, I mean Vince here with Slapchop. Ryan Seacrest, oops, I mean Vince here with Slapchop. You'll be slapping it more than you slap your dick. Here's a potato. One slap, I'm not getting late. Two slaps, I'm going to prison for sexual harassment. Oh, add in a mushroom and I'm labeled as a sexual predator. Now I love salads. I love tossing them, but I'm always too hungover to make them. Now just throw some shit in there. You know, t toss some shit in there. Just slap it, you like slit. You slap a transvestite hook after she gives you herpes. Come on, keep slapping, keep slapping. Now you got a meal that won't feed a starving child in Africa. Take a look at this boring ass tuna. You're a loser. Give this tuna some spice and you're one step closer to moving out of your mother's basement. Oh, yep, just put that on there. Oh, yep, slap that up. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of getting hot over here. Uh -huh. Here's your egg. Throw in Shrek's dick. Throw in a blunt, too. Chop that up. Oh, you know what? Throw in some last week's liver there, too. That's real good. Yep, just don't get salmonella. Yeah. Little kids always love my nuts. Throw those testicles in the slap chop. Yep, keep tossing them in there. Oh, there's an Indian kid's nuts. Put it on. Look, one uh, finger. I'll finger your ass with one finger. Then I'll clean up the evidence, eh? Oh, yep. Throw in some Oreos in there. That's hot. I like that. Hey, you. You a fat ass trying to lose weight? Put in some fruit in there like Elton John. Mmm, yeah. You wanna know why you'll be slapping it, eh? Cause you, when you murder, you can clean up the evidence. Look, one, there you go, two, and then it pops open like my erection when I'm watching Home and Garden television. Now those bootleg slap chops, those are just garbage, worse than what I'm selling. Doesn't open, get that shit out of you, Kobe. Now you mm -hmm. take the slap chop, put it back it. together, throw in some garlic in there. Then it skins the garlic right off like my foreskin. See the onion? It makes me cry like when I read the Harry Potter series. Now all you gotta do, put that in, and then push it like you're giving birth. Look, oh, thrust that. Get the thrusting motion. Oh, that's nice. Look at it. Take it out. Skin's just chilling there. Skin's now, I'm on welfare chill. right now, so I can't afford any gourmet desserts, so I just throw in a tomato and some goat's milk. Mix that up. That's great. Now, take a look at our customer's advice. Slap chop smoking amazing. Sometimes I don't even cook, I just pleasure myself with it. It's great. Now I get diced eggs and diarrhea. It's very fun. It's more fun than when that Italian guy thrusted me. <laughs> Not only do you get this worthless hunk of junk, we'll throw in this Grady thing. It grates cheese, it grates your grandfather's balls like that he did back in Vietnam. It's, it's, it can even work for pleasure if you really want. We'll give it to you with this product. Look at it grate that cheese coming through. Then you just put that out. Clean it up, put the cap on, easy storage. It's marvelous if you ask me. And you know what? We'll give you that, not for nineteen ninety five. that's a waste of money. I could get a blowjob and bagel for that much. We'll give you that and the Grady for free. You're pretty much getting both of those things for nineteen ninety five. What a deal. Look at that. Oh, yeah, you go. Call now. Folks, for your own good, please don't call this number. Both of these products are worthless pieces of shit. And actually, if you dial this, you'll continue to get spam email about Asians fucking dogs. Thank you. Alright, a little vulgar, but come on. Some fantastic lines for a kid of 16 in his room, improvising, trying my voices. Was honing then. And let this all be a lesson to you. If you stick with it, you could one day, 17 years into it, kind of have a nice audience on Instagram and TikTok and be stranded in L.A. still working mundane jobs with uh, no relationship with your family.